Phytoplankton are a microscopic form of floating algae, which form the primary component of the food chain for the world's lakes and oceans. They are the second most abundant life form on Earth, right behind bacteria. Yet most people know almost nothing about them, and more importantly, don't understand the importance of these tiny life forms. These algae produce more than half of the carbon-based organic matter on this Earth, so losing phytoplankton would have devastating effects to the Earth's biogeochemical cycles. Since 1979, phytoplankton concentrations have been derived from satellite imaging and have been closely linked to the changes in our climate. However, 35 years of data is just not sufficient to see any long-term trends. In 1865, Father Pietro Angelo Secchi created something called the Secchi Disc. Now, this is basically a simple device that was dropped off the side of the boat and was used to measure the ocean transparency. Since ocean transparency correlates with chlorophyll concentrations, scientists now have data dating all the way back to 1899. These results show chlorophyll concentrations in relation to time and geographic location. And with this data, Boyce and colleagues were able to create a global database of phytoplankton biomass, abundance and changes spanning over a century. The studies based on these results essentially shows that phytoplankton shows short-term variation and long-term trends. Long-term trends could be linked to things such as changes in vertical stratification, aerosol deposition from the atmosphere, ice coverage in the Arctic regions, wind and cloud formation, coastal runoff, and even ocean circulation. However, the authors decided to focus on three variables that they believe would best reflect the coupling between physical climate variability and the chlorophyll concentrations in the upper ocean. These were ocean mixed layer depth, wind at 10 metres above sea level, and sea surface temperature. Rising sea surface temperatures over most of the globe were heavily associated with declining chlorophyll levels in 8 out of the 10 ocean regions. The effects of sea surface temperature on chlorophyll are probably explained by its influence on water column stability and mixed layer depth. Rising sea surface temperatures results in a lower mixed layer. Now what this does is reduces the nutrients available to the phytoplankton in already stratified tropic waters. However, this same effect benefits phytoplankton at higher latitudes where growth is constrained by light levels and deep mixing. The conclusion to these findings was that phytoplankton had declined in 8 out of 10 ocean regions with a global rate of decline of 1% of the global median per year. The results also showed interannual to decadal fluctuations superimposed on these long-term trends. These fluctuations showed strong correlation to small-scale climate changes. However, the main decline of phytoplankton is very clearly linked to the increase in sea surface temperature. Boyce et al. also conducted a similar study under controlled circumstances, where they found that warming reduced phytoplankton biomass by the increased grazing of zooplankton. Either way, the unfortunate reality is that phytoplankton biomass is in decline, and this will likely have serious implications for the future.